Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most legendary aircraft ever built, the SR-71 Blackbird. This jet was not just fast, it was revolutionary, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in aviation. But what makes the SR-71 story even more incredible is the secret backstory of how the US CIA tricked the Soviet Union into supplying the titanium to build it. Yup, you heard that right. The US got the material for one of the most iconic spy planes from the very country it was built to spy on. So buckle up as we take a high speed ride through the history of the SR-71 Blackbird, its incredible capabilities, and the Cold War era espionage that helped make it possible. One, the birth of the SR-71, a speed and altitude marvel. Let's kick things off by talking about how the SR-71 Blackbird came to be. In the 1950s, during the height of the Cold War, the US needed an aircraft that could fly faster and higher than anything else in the sky. It was a time when reconnaissance satellites were not yet fully operational, so the US needed a plane that could gather intelligence deep within Soviet territory without being shot down. Enter Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works, the same top secret division that brought us legendary aircraft like the U-2 spy plane. They took on the challenge of developing a spy plane that could outrun missiles and enemy jets. The result was the SR-71 Blackbird, an aircraft capable of flying at Mach 3.2, that's over 2,200 miles per hour, and at an altitude of 85,000 feet, so high and fast that no missile or fighter jet could reach it. The SR-71 was more than just fast, it was a technological marvel. It had a radar absorbing design, making it stealthy before stealth was even a mainstream concept. The Blackbird could outrun any threat and gather intelligence without being caught, but building a plane like this required some very special materials, most importantly, titanium. Two, the need for titanium. So, why titanium? Well, at Mach 3.2, the SR-71 generated an enormous amount of heat from air friction. The surface of the plane could reach temperatures of over 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is far too hot for regular metals like aluminum or steel to handle. They would simply melt. To withstand these extreme conditions, the engineers at Skunk Works needed a material that was lightweight, strong and heat resistant. Titanium was the answer. But there was one major problem. Titanium, especially in the quantities needed to build the SR-71, was incredibly hard to come by and the world's largest supplier of titanium at the time, you guessed it, the Soviet Union, the very country the Blackbird was designed to spy on. So how did the US get its hands on Soviet titanium? This is where the story takes a twist, involving one of the boldest covert operations of the Cold War. Three, the CIA's clever titanium heist. This is where the CIA steps in with some good old fashioned Cold War espionage. The CIA knew that they couldn't just go to the Soviet Union and ask for titanium to build a spy plane that would fly over their airspace. Instead, they came up with a brilliant plan to trick the Soviets into selling the titanium directly to them without the Soviets ever knowing it. How did they pull this off? The CIA set up a network of fake companies and third party suppliers to act as middlemen. These shell companies were created specifically to purchase titanium from the Soviets, disguising the true purpose of the material. The Soviets believed they were selling titanium for civilian uses like commercial aircraft or industrial projects, never suspecting that it was being funneled to build a plane that would spy on them. This operation was incredibly complex, with these fake companies spread across various countries, creating a paper trail that would be nearly impossible to trace back to the US. The Soviets, completely unaware of the CIA's involvement, provided the US with enough titanium to build the entire fleet of SR-71s. It's one of the most ironic twists in aviation history. The Soviets unknowingly helped build the very plane that would spy on them. The titanium was used to craft over 90% of the SR-71's airframe, making the aircraft light, durable, and heat resistant. Four, unmatched speed and altitude. Now that we know how the SR-71 was built, let's talk about what made it so special in terms of performance. The SR-71 still holds the record for being the fastest air-breathing manned aircraft in history. At Mark 3.2, the Blackbird could outrun any missile launched at it. Here's a fun fact. The SR-71 was so fast that the official procedure for evading a missile wasn't to dodge it, like you'd see in the movies. Instead, the pilot would simply accelerate 
the plane could fly so fast that missiles would run out of fuel before they could catch up to the Blackbird. Its altitude capabilities were also unmatched. At 85,000 feet, the SR-71 flew so high that pilots could actually see the curvature of the Earth and the blackness of space. It was nearly untouchable, and for years, the US military relied on the SR-71 to gather critical intelligence from enemy territories, the legacy of the SR-71 Blackbird. Despite its incredible capabilities, the SR-71 was retired in 1998. There were several reasons for this, including the development of more advanced reconnaissance satellites and the high cost of maintaining the aircraft. But even today, more than 50 years after its first flight, the SR-71 remains one of the most iconic aircraft ever built. The Blackbird not only set records, but also pushed the boundaries of engineering, stealth, and high-speed flight. Its legacy continues to influence modern aircraft design, and the stories surrounding its development, like the CIA's titanium operation, make it one of the most fascinating chapters in aviation history. Six, could there be an SR-72? With the SR-71 retired, there's been a lot of speculation about its successor, the rumored SR-72. The SR-72 is said to be a hypersonic aircraft, capable of flying at speeds of Mach 6 or higher. If it becomes a reality, it could once again change the game in terms of intelligence gathering and global strike capabilities. But for now, the SR-71 remains the undisputed king of high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance. Its combination of stealth, speed, and the sheer ingenuity of its construction make it a true legend. Conclusion. So, there you have it. The incredible story of the SR-71 Blackbird and how the CIA tricked the Soviets into supplying the titanium needed to build it. The SR-71 wasn't just fast, it was a symbol of innovation and the lengths the US was willing to go to stay ahead during the Cold War. What do you think? Does the SR-71 deserve its title as one of the greatest aircraft ever built? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content on the most amazing machines in military history. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.